this right here is the most expensive laptop I've ever bought in my life. And to be honest with you guys, I don't know if it was really worth it, but we'll talk about that in today's video right here. So we're going to go over my long-term use of this M1 Max MacBook Pro. So this is the 16 inch version um, that was released last year in October. This laptop plays a huge role in my day-to-day -day activities. I'm talking about in you know my regular day-to-day -day life activities as well as my work activities, but it plays more roles you know, when it comes to my work because I use it for a lot of video editing and a lot of photo editing. I even do some motion graphics design work you know, using this laptop. And I use Apple applications, you know, primarily for doing my work. So Final Cut Pro X, my video editing and motion graphics or motion for you know all of my graphic work. This is my six month long term review because it's, it's been about six months now since this laptop has been released. It's not exactly six months yet, but you know, it's getting there. This beast right here cost me 5,100. So 5,144 Canadian dollars, not American dollars, FYI, because I know things do cost more here in Canada, but I don't think it was worth it. It honestly was not worth that much. You don't need that much for the kind of work that you know I do. At least that's what I've noticed from you know the long-term use of uh, this laptop. It's overkill, is what I'm saying. So I don't need, or I could have saved you know as much money as possible by going for something lesser. I had a 2017 15-inch. Um, Intel based MacBook Pro. So it wasn't bad, it was okay, but I'll tell you guys right now, there were times that, you know, I'd edit a video that was 30 minutes to 40 minutes long and try to export that, you know, using a lot of graphics and all of these different things. And it just was the worst. It'll take me three to four hours to export those. So I'll, I'll kind of just like let it do its thing while I go to bed. So it wasn't a bad laptop if you're doing very light work, you know. I edit a lot of videos and I'm talking a lot. Virtually every single day, I'm editing some kind of video and honestly, I need the best system. And this right here has played a huge role. Like I said, I don't think it's worth that money. I could have went for the M1 Pro maybe and still been able to get away with it because I've seen some other people with the M1 Pro models and you know, doing very well with that as well. But there's no regrets at all because honestly, when it comes to my work, there's no investment that's big enough. I'd rather put in as much as I can, you know, to make my workflow a lot easier and a lot faster. This is honestly the perfect work machine to bring anywhere, if, especially if you're like me that, you know, uh, you do a lot of video editing, photo editing, motion graphics work. This laptop has got 64 gigabytes of unified memory, one terabyte of SSD storage, because I use an SSD, an external SSD with this when I do all of my editing, so I save all my files either on there or on my cloud storage, because I have my own, you know, home-built NAS on RAID servers. This is like my primary driver for everything I do for work. So um, the MacBook Pro that I had before, you know, it did well with the 1080p videos. Once I started to hit the 4K videos, and I'm talking large 4K footage, I had to start editing using proxy. So I had to start, you know, reducing the quality of the footage just to edit, you know, so I can have good playback, smooth playback. You could definitely use that to edit. There's no problem with that. It doesn't change the quality when you export the video, but you don't really get to see what the footage looks like, you know, in its real form, what you want it to look like at the end. Switching to this and getting this, honestly, that part was right out the window, man. 4K videos, super easy, super smooth. And now I even edit HDR videos. So 4K HDR videos, super smooth, super easy, and it exports extremely quickly, especially if you're working with Apple's um, ProRes. So ProRes is their codec. This allows you to retain as much quality as possible in any video. So it's, a, it's usually large files, but the quality is insane. This laptop is great if you work with Apple programs because it's optimized for them. You know, it works better with apps like uh, Final Cut Pro, Motion, you know, Logic, anything that's designed by Apple. So I had a 15 inch screen size on my 2017 MacBook Pro, and now I've got a 16 inch size. And honestly, the difference is not that much, but it's noticeable. It's noticeable if you, you know, you're staring at that uh, screen a lot. And for me, I walk, work, you know, all over the place. I'm not always sitting in my office working using my extended um, ultra wide display. What I do is I bring the laptop around the house as well. You know, I edit in the living room. You know, I edit all over the place. I like to be mobile. I don't like to be, you know, stuck in one place doing all of my work. You know, I move around the place. And um, having that 16 inch of screen real estate is awesome because I'd rather be editing on a larger, you know, display than on a smaller one because, come on, you can't really get all the details. It doesn't really uh, look as good on a smaller screen when you're working with uh, graphics, editing, anything at all. So the screen has really thin bezels on the side as well, very 
um, unobstructive, so you don't have to worry about it getting in the way. One of the things I love doing with this laptop is editing my videos and my photos using that beautiful display. So I tend to dock it uh, to my ultra wide display, my LG ultra wide, and I use, I edit there, you know, a lot, but I like to take it away from there and kind of see what my videos look like on the display of this, because it's just beautiful. It's an XDR OLED display that's just beautiful. That's all I can say, the colors are, you know, insane, and this, that's why I went for the 16 inch edition. But as for the notch, there was a lot of, you know, talking about it at the start. A lot of people were talking about how it's gonna be, in, get in the way, how it was gonna be a problem, how they hated the notch and whatnot. And me, I was kind of nonchalant about it, you know, I didn't really care, or I didn't hate it, didn't like it, it was just whatever to me. But I feel like all that talk about the notch help this laptop sell even more because more people brought more attention to the laptop. And after a few months, people were talking about the notch way less. So it's not, you know, a big deal. It's really not a big deal. In the time that I've used it, it's not for once, you know, occurred to me that that thing is right there. And I don't use any, you know, app hiding, whatever to hide the notch. It's just right there. I just got used to it. And I feel like everyone else will get used to it or I've already gotten used to it if you already have one. As for the camera, they upgraded the FaceTime camera to a 1080p one. So it looks so much better. I do use it every once in a while when I, you know, have my Zoom calls with collaborators or companies that I'm talking to or just anybody at all. You know, whenever I'm talking using that camera, it just looks beautiful. It looks so much cleaner. And um, yeah, I don't use it much, but it's a very, you know, good camera. If you're going to be, you know, doing a lot of Zoom calls or using it for office work, whatever you're going to use it for. So it's got a low profile mechanical keyboard that honestly is inaudible. It's tactile, so it's so nice to the touch. Gentle bumps, that's all you get. You know, it's not loud and crazy and clicky. It's just nice and tactile. I love it, I love it, I love it. I use mechanical keyboards. You know, not always low profile, like I use the Keychron K2 at my desk when I have this connected to my ultra wide, and I love it. It sounds so quiet and peaceful. It's one of those keyboards that makes you want to type, man. I'm telling you guys right now, and it's it's just really pleasing to, to listen to. Yeah, the keyboard is pretty cool, and uh, one more thing about the keyboard is the fingerprint scanner. It's uh, to the top right corner of this um, laptop, and they changed that from the previous generations that used to have the touch bar. So the touch bar, you know, allowed people to just kind of just tap on the corner there. Sometimes you won't even know if you actually tapped it. There was no problem with the touch bar. Honestly, I had no issues using the fingerprint scanner on that. And this one right here, it's kind of the same in my opinion. I don't really notice a difference. This one's a button, the other one's not. This one's designed to fit your fingers better. That one's not, but honestly, it's, you know, it's a passing thought when I just push that, when I push on there. When I, when I put my uh, fingerprint on there, it's really a passing thought. And when I use this with um, my ultra wide display, I can't even use that. So I'd have to use like, you know, an Apple watch or something like that to unlock my laptop because you can't really push it. It's usually docked in clamshell mode. It's always good to have a fingerprint scanner because honestly, I, I like that ease of use, you know, as well as the fact that it's more secure than a simple password. So I went ahead and bought this laptop in space gray. So I changed that uh, simple space gray color with by adding a texture, you know, a carbon fiber texture skin that I purchased from dbrand to kind of just, you know, give it some life. Everybody had something like that. It just looked space gray and simple. And that's just like every single Mac out there. And I wanted something that stood out a little different. I still like the space gray, you know, color, but I wanted some texture to it. It looks good on the laptop and it matches my phone which also has uh, the same texture, so carbon fiber, and it's also space gray. So the laptop is super thin, and it's heavier than you know what I had before, the 2017 model, and it's thicker than it, but honestly, it makes me feel a little bit more comfortable that you know it's not going to drop out of my hand because I tend to forget that it's there. All right, up next, I'll talk about my experience with the speakers. So the speakers on this thing is amazing. That's all I'll say right now is that they're amazing. I don't use headphones with them when I edit my videos or when I listen to music or watch YouTube videos and whatnot. So I just use the speakers on there. And I don't have any speakers at my desk. Even in clamshell mode, it sounds decent enough. By itself, I'm surprised by the quality I can get out of it. It sounds exactly how you would want it to sound, you know, with all the bass and, you know, everything like that. It just sounds really, really clean for, you know, editing videos and all of that. So as for connectivity options, Apple has added back MagSafe 3 
or I guess MagSafe 3 is like a better version of the MagSafe, which is just, you know, the magnetic system for charging uh, the MacBook Pros. And I love that system because it's more secure than using the USB-C from the older models. You know, the 2017 I had before, that thing would always disconnect and honestly, it wasn't, it wasn't the best. They've also added an HDMI output back, which I really love. I haven't used it you know, uh, yet because I use a USB-C for, you know, power delivery and for data transfer. So that's how I get my uh, uh, ultra wide connected to my MacBook Pro. It's also really nice to have the SD card slot back, but I don't really use it as much anymore. I used to use it like, you know, the first three months after this laptop released, I use it a lot more because I use, you know, a regular SD card. So now I don't use an SD card anymore. I use a camera that, you know, uses a CF Express type a card so these cards are smaller and don't fit into uh, that same slot you know the one on the MacBook Pro so now I'm basically back to connecting uh, my camera to my MacBook Pro using an external dock so I have to you know attach something that has a USB cable a USB input which is the one missing port honestly that just pisses me off like I'm, I'm just here like just mad because I spent that much money and I still don't have you know, a slot to input or to use things like flash drives or, you know, for example, my camera that uses a USB-C to a regular USB uh, uh, cable. So I, I really don't like that and I don't like how ineffective that makes my work because it brings me back to one, one of the things I hated with my um, older MacBook, which was basically not having an SD card slot. The CF Express Type A, they're kind of newer cards. They're not common yet, so I wouldn't expect them to, you know, put that into consideration when developing these things. The only issue that I have, like I said, is not having regular USB ports. Like, why can't we have those? Why are there three USB-C ports and no USB ports? It's just, dri it drives me crazy, you know, to think about it. And finally, for the best part, the best thing I've enjoyed, battery life. It's ridiculous. It's, ri it's absolutely ridiculous. So the battery life in this thing sometimes will last me the whole day depending on what I'm doing. When I'm doing editing, if I'm working, you know, using a uh, moderate brightness as opposed to, you know, all the way up there, this thing can last me, I'm talking seven to eight hours of straight editing, you know, without dying. It's crazy. Sometimes I, I don't even know, I'm like, I'm bringing it around the house. I'm like, I haven't charged this thing, man. I, and then I realized the battery is great. It's amazing, it's awesome. It makes it so that, you know, this laptop being a laptop is actually mobile. So, cause a lot of people, you know, want a laptop that they can use on a road or in a place where they don't have access to electricity, you know, and still be able to, you know, battery life is basically extremely important on devices that you bring around. I don't know when laptops got to the points where they cost, you know, about as much as a car. Yeah, you can buy a car in some places. It's expensive, but it's mobile, you know, you're packing that much power in something that you can just throw in a backpack and, you know, get out with. So for me, it's not worth it like to pay five thousand dollars everything i do in general i don't think that this specific laptop you know is needed i got this to make sure i don't run into any issues when it comes to my work i hope you guys have found this video useful or enjoyable to watch if you did don't forget to leave a like subscribe if you're new to the channel and let me know if you have any questions down in the comment section about this video about this laptop or my experience with it so far and i will catch you guys in my next video it's Midas, and I'm out of here, y'all.